Today we're going to look at the most famous operator of the Underground Railroad. So where did this hero come from? Harriet Tubman was often compared with great women in history like Joan of Arc and Florence Nightingale. Harriet's birth name was actually Araminta Ross, but her mother called her Minty. So why do we call her Harriet Tubman now? Minty probably changed her name in honor of her mother, whose name was Harriet or Rit for short. When she was about 22, she married a free man named John Tubman. This was in 1844, which is the same year that Samuel F. B. Moore sent the first telegraphic message. Minty's father was Benjamin Ross, but everyone called him Old Ben. So we have Old Ben and Rit. Minty, Lena, Maria, Soph, Robert, Benjamin Jr., Rachel, Henry, and Moses. Minty and her mother were owned by a young man named Edward Brodus. He farmed corn, wheat, and rye. Edward Brodus had a stepfather named Anthony Thompson Sr., who was the master of Minty's father. When she was only six years old, she was taken from her mother and hired out to a man 10 miles away. She was hired out as a housekeeper by day and a nurse by night. Seven-year-old Minty did her best to rock the baby, but her eyelids grew heavy, the rocking stopped, the baby cried, and the mistress gave Minty back to her master. She said that Minty wasn't worth sixpence. Little did she know that someday Minty would be wanted for $12,000. If you learned something new about our hero today, put it in the comments below and click subscribe if you haven't already. When Minty was 13, she was following a runaway into a village store. But the overseer had found the slave too, and ordered Minty to tie him up. But Minty wouldn't do it, allowing the slave to run out of the store. Before the overseer could give chase, Minty stood in his way. So the overseer took a two pound weight and threw it at the running slave. But the weight didn't go far enough. It struck Minty right in the head, and if it wasn't for her thick hair and shawl, that's where our story would have ended. The injury still caused her to have cataleptic seizures and headaches. How did Minty get through all these hardships? Her parents, Old Ben and Rich, had a strong faith in God, and they taught her to do the same. Pears like I prayed all the time, she said, about my work everywhere. I was always talking to the Lord. Despite her injury, Minty continued to hire herself out. Then one day, Minty learned that her master, Edward Brodus, was gonna sell her and her two brothers down south. Brodus' stepfather promised that they wouldn't be sold out of the neighborhood. But Minty didn't buy it. She'd already seen her sisters, Lena and Soph, sold when she was a child. And so she was determined to be free or die trying. Minty tried to convince her husband, John Tubman, to run with her. But as a free man, he didn't see the need to run the risk. 1849 was the beginning of the gold rush in California. In September of the same year, Minty and two of her brothers, Henry and Benjamin Jr., decided to run away. Okay, let's look at our obstacles. Snakes, bears, cougars, slave hunters and their bloodhounds, the weather, little or close to no food, barely any clothes, and probably no shoes. On top of all that, they couldn't read or write, so the North Star was their only guide. And if they asked a stranger for help, they might be betrayed and sent back to their master. Somewhere along the way, Henry and Junior decided that it was too dangerous. So they turned back dragging Minty with them. But Minty made up her mind and decided to set out on her journey to freedom alone. Minty didn't give much detail about her journey, but it's likely that she went through the Underground Railroad. Finally, Minty crossed the invisible line of liberty. She was free, but she was alone while everyone she knew was still trapped in slavery. As Minty lay alone, she decided that she would go back for her people. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.